just stay calm, Rock. You're doing great. Remember your training, and we'll be out of this in no time. Slow breathing, and try not to get too excited. Oh, whatever you do, don't remove your helmet. Thanks, wise guy. You boys had better find a way for me to get back home. Copy that, Tarantino. You just leave everything to us. It wouldn't be so bad. But it's the hunger that's really killing me. I feel like I haven't eaten in days. I found what looks like a, a mince in my spacesuit. I'm gonna have to eat this real soon. Listen, Mark. Try to find a distraction out there so you don't think about food. Hey, Brad! Hey, Leroy. I brought you those doors you like with the extra icing and candy strands. Thanks, Leroy. So who's that you're talking to? That's Rock Tarantino. He's still out there in orbit. Jesus! He's really up shit creek. There ain't no way in hell we're gonna get him back. Does he have his suicide pill? They've been in short supply since Shrub was elected. Hey, you guys. I can still hear you. And speaking of air, how about getting me some out of here? You still there, Rock? Start counting stars. That'll keep you busy. Get me out of here, guys. I only have a few hours left. Hello? Phil, how's it going? Who's this? It's Dave. Dave Weaver. Jesus, I know it's been a few weeks. No, sorry, Dave. I'm not really with it today. Sally left me again. Third time this month. She always said my life wasn't exciting enough for her. Plus, she's never really forgiven me for running her over with her own car. Even though it was an accident. Gutted! I always thought I'd get the chance to meet her. Still, that's in the past now. Are you going to come to the cinema? What's on? Tsunami! Tsunami? What's that all about then? Documentary, is it? <laughs> it's this summer's big blockbuster disaster movie! There's this big tidal wave that causes the moon to break from its orbit and crash into the sea! that defend the Earth from an alien invasion! At the centre of it, there's this heartwarming story of friendship and bravery. That's pathetic, and it's been done a million times before. Give me one good reason why I'd want to go and see that. Sarah Michelle Geller from Buffy... Gets a kit up Hello? Hello? The observatory reports that the media is becoming unstable. Smaller rocks will begin to break off, and these will reach Earth before the main body. We need to act now while we still have one target. People, we need ideas quickly. Dr. Verhoeven, what is your proposal? My proposal? Oh yes, my proposal. First we'll be flying to the meteors and doing the landings. Mom, is he all right? I think so. Go on, Doctor, but keep it brief. Then we'll be doing the drillings. Then some more drillings. Then we'll be planting explosives, flying away and coming back again. This man's insane. He may be insane, but he's the best we have. So where do we start, Doctor? We must be doing the plannings and the simulations. We need to find a real environment in which to do the practices. What about the stuff we used to fake the moon landings? We did not fake the moon landings. Really? What about the Martian landings? We're filming those in the fall. Madam President Lady! Make it quick, Doctor. I have a report from the observatory where we've been doing our lookings up into the sky with wonderment and fascination. What exactly do you mean? I'm afraid we've been making mistakes in the trajectory calculations. It seems that the meteor is no longer going to hit the Americas. He's going to be hitting the greatest of the Britons. Oh. Oh. So, there's no cause for alarm. OK, everyone, the show's over. Perhaps we should warn them. Right, I'll give them a call. I think that's a responsibility for the President. <laughs> no offence, JVP, but you always dial the wrong number. Are you questioning my ability because I'm a woman, Mr Vice President? Hello, how can I be of assistance? Hey, can you patch me through to Mr Blair? It's top priority. I have 
tell him about a meteor that's going to hit the United Kingdom. I think you have the wrong number. Thank you for calling the Bangalore Research Institute for Meteorological Studies. Give me that. Staying all day waiting for Sally to call. That's the spirit. Anyway, if she was really keen, she'd be back in no time. Besides, there's plenty more fish in the sea, right? Right. Take her, for instance. Oh my god, it's her! You little shit! How could you betray me so heartlessly? No, listen, Sal, don't do anything hasty. Remember, it was you that left me. I left you? You left me under a car for eight days. What? Sally? What are you talking about? Phil, is this your girlfriend? She's a bloody nutcase! <laughs> Sal, I swear I didn't know. Just put the sword down and we'll talk about it, OK? Oh, Sal, you seem like a nice girl. Why don't you come see Tsunami with us? Phil, buy some popcorn. I will, yeah. All right, we'll betray you one more time. OK. Oh. Hello? Is that Mr Blair? Speaking, who's this? This is the Vice President of the United States of America. No way. Yes way. Now listen, we've calculated that a meteor is going to hit a city that you call Birmingham. Yeah, which film is this? I'm afraid it's no film, Mr. Blair. And what's more, I can prove it. Do you have a handheld PC? Uh, say an XDA2 or an iPack? Well, yes. Up in a secure socket. Give me your routing address, access port, account number, bank key and PIN number. Uh, OK. OK. My socket's open, ready to see you. 433 You have 24 hours to evacuate England. Although smaller chunks of debris will begin raining down from space before then. Good luck and God bless America. Oh, bollocks. This is really it. What? Go and get the others. Meet me at the National Space Centre in one hour. Why? Because we've got work to do. The first Franks will enter our atmosphere within a matter of hours. I want to hear all your ideas, no matter how stupid you think they are. Well, perhaps we could strap wings to the meteor, then when it hits our atmosphere, it'll catch a high wind and soar fat into space. OK, let me qualify that statement. I said I wanted to hear your ideas, unless they're totally insane. In which case, don't speak again. How about firing a laser beam? Oh, what good would a laser beam do? I like laser beams. OK, a laser beam, good. Any more ideas? Well, maybe the government could do something. You were warned earlier. Let me just say, Phil, they're scared. You're right, Sally. I was a fool leaving you under that car. I'm sorry. Could it be I'm seeing a different side to you now? Stronger, more determined side? Maybe this is who I was always meant to be. Any more ideas? Dave? I'm sorry, Phil. Mine's a total blank. Come on, this isn't rocket science. Well, actually, it is. OK, so it is rocket science. So we need a rocket. That's it! We get a rocket, fill it full of desperados and send them up to a meteor. They can drill down through the surface and plant a nuclear charge! Right, <laughs> I think you've been watching too many Bruce Willis films. OK, Pete, see if you can borrow a space shuttle from NASA. OK. Dave, we're going to need a crew. We're going to need a pilot, a navigator, a geologist and a drilling expert. Right! Sally, go with him, for me. OK. John boy, we need a nuclear bomb. Go buy one. There's just one thing. To train a crew for a hazardous space mission, kit them out, run simulations, that's going to take months. We don't have months. We have 24 hours. <laughs> 